Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Queen of Black Magic. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a family of five in a moving car consisting of the father, Nif, the mother, Nad, and their three children. They are on their way to the orphanage Nif grew up in because the man who raised him has become very ill. Nad tells her kids to be thankful because unlike their father, they have parents while growing up. She looks at Nif and confesses to them that she and Nif adopted them all when they were babies. Silence and tension are felt, but the two siblings burst out laughing as they know it is a joke. They start bickering, while Nif stares at Nad when something suddenly hits the vehicle. Nif maneuvers the car to the roadside. After some investigation, the oldest son calls his father's attention as he finds a dead deer on the roadside. They ignore that and return to the road, unaware that there's an unconscious girl on the other side. They arrive at the orphanage, where the caretaker and his wife welcome the family. Because he's young, the little son cannot help but ask about the face of the caretaker's wife as her right eye is almost closed. Nad shushes her son and introduces the other two kids. Shortly after, another vehicle arrives, and Nif reunites with his childhood friends, Ton and Jeff, who also come with their wives. Caretaker informs Nif that only two of the orphan kids, Havoc and Rain, are there, as the others will arrive that night from a trip. Caretaker then takes Nif and his friends to the man that raised them. They reunite with Mr. Bandy, pale and evidently weak. Meanwhile, their wives share how they have never heard of Mr. Bandy until now. Seconds later, Nif fetches Nad and takes her to Mr. Bandy, so the two wives follow into the room. Nif says that if it wasn't for Mr. Bandy, he and his two childhood friends would have died or maybe been abandoned. Havoc and Rain take Nif's kids to the living room, where they watch television. While Havoc unlocks the door, the daughter notices the locked room on the corner. Havoc informed her that it has been locked for a long time. While his siblings settle in their beds, the boy approaches the abandoned room when Rain suddenly speaks, startling him. Rain shares the room's history to feed the boy's curiosity. A woman named Mira once worked in the orphanage and went out with one orphan named Myrnie. After a while, Mira returned and screamed like a crazy woman that Myrnie was abducted by a demon. So they locked Mira in that room while the rest searched for Myrnie. Mira kept banging on the door, but no one opened it for her. When they finally opened it, they found her dead, with her head cracked open from the banging. Later, it was rumored that Mira killed Myrnie as they never found her. Rain then laughs after successfully scaring the boy, before leaving him to help caretaker and his wife. Shortly after, everyone is gathered in Mr. Bandy's room, looking through the old photo albums. While the rest talk about how caretaker and his wife are soulmates, the boy finds an album underneath the cabinet. He shows it to them, as the pictures are all backward, but there's one paragraph that's not inserted. It's a picture of Mira with a young girl, Myrnie. Tom clarifies that Mira was lovely, but then she fell sick and passed away while Myrnie is a friend of theirs. However, after separating from his friends and the kids, Nif tells a different story to Nad. He claims that Mira became crazy from too much stress after her favorite girl, Myrnie, ran away. Nad notices that Nif is bothered by something, and Nif shares that it was about the road accident. But he doesn't continue as he doesn't want Nad to worry. He goes outside to get the bread from the car and talks to Ton and Jeff about what will happen to the orphanage once Mr. Bandy's gone, as his children are financially well. Ton believes that Mr. Bandy's children must not sell the place as they will unravel something. He returns inside while Nif notices something in his car. He checks it and panics after confirming its blood and human hair from the road accident. Jeff worries after seeing Nif's reaction, but he gets into the vehicle as Nif instructed. While returning to the road, Nif shares that he knew it wasn't a deer he had a while ago, but he needs to ensure. They soon arrive at the roadside, where Nif stares at the dead deer, while Jeff almost stumbles after seeing the unconscious young girl under the unseen trench. Nif panics and curses as he sees the girl, but then he notices something deep in the field. He investigates it, ignoring Jeff following him. They find a bus with dead orphanage children, stirring more panic. Jeff suggests calling the police, but it's a two-hour drive, so he tells Nif that they need to return to the orphanage and make a call from there. Meanwhile, Nad uses the telephone to contact them as there's no signal, but caretaker informs her that it's not working anymore as they haven't paid the bill yet. She dismisses that and returns to the dining table with the adults. Jeff's wife catches their attention as she refuses to eat dinner despite having a petite body. Nad then calls out to Ton's wife as she has sprayed alcohol on her hands every second. Tan shares that his wife had a rush a few months ago, but she got paranoid and believed it was a flesh-eating bacteria. Tan's wife defends herself and adds that the rush turned into blisters and pus came out. Nad changes the subject as it's a gross topic while eating. 
Meanwhile, the oldest son cringes at his sister's evident admiration for Havoc's care for the other orphans and the orphanage. At the same time, Rain instructs the boy to finish his meal before she shows him a video of Mira. On the other hand, caretaker comforts his wife as she stares enviingly at their guests. He believes that just because they're living a better life doesn't mean they're genuinely happy. She denies being jealous and clarifies that she thinks that caretaker stayed because he pitied her. Caretaker clarifies that he married her because no one wanted to be married to either of them. Rain enters the kitchen to wash the dishes, while the boy follows her to apologize to the couple for the rude question about the wife's face. She assures him that it's okay and shares she accidentally fell and poured hot water on her face as a child. The boy finally fulfills his curiosity and compliments the couple by kissing the wife on the face, saying she's pretty before running away. Shortly after, Rain takes the boy to the living room, where she plays a video recording of Nif with his friends and a limp lady who's actually Mira. Rain explains that Mira used to cry a lot as a baby, so her abusive father broke her leg, and since then, she walked limply. Rain then pulls out the videotape despite the boy's protest. At that time, Jeff and Nif arrive, still in a panic about the girl. Tom goes out after hearing the vehicle and notices their expressions. However, after seeing the girl in the back, Tom panics as well and demands an explanation from Nif. Nif shares the bus full of dead orphans and explains that he wants to call the police, but Tom informs him that the phone hasn't been working for days. Tom tells them to solve the girl in the back while he checks out the bus at kilometer 81. Meanwhile, the kids go to the gaming area, which used to be the bedroom for the orphans, but then they start hearing footsteps around the room. At this time, Tom arrives at kilometer 81, where he finds the supposedly dead orphans, standing with their backs to him. The door slams shut, so Tom repeatedly budges it to open. However, he stops after noticing a woman staring at him. While backing away from the door, he accidentally cracks an egg full of cockroaches, and the dead orphans are now facing him. Nevertheless, his attention is not on them, as the insects crawl at his body before entering his mouth and skin. On the other hand, a crow suddenly drops dead on the dining table, startling Nif and Nat. Meanwhile, Jeff's wife tries to be intimate with Jeff, who rejects her attempt. Ashamed, she informs Jeff that she's taking hormone treatment to stabilize her metabolism and keep her skinny. Jeff tries to make his wife feel better, but she leaves the room without a word. She's about to walk away when she suddenly hears a metal clattering, which she follows, leading to a table. It has a bowl of fruits and a small knife. She uses it to cut the fruits before staring at herself in the mirror. At this time, caterpillars fall from the ceiling onto Tan's wife, who panics after feeling them crawling on her body. She tries to get rid of them, but they enter her mouth, causing her to choke. Back to Jeff's wife, she seems possessed as she cuts off fats from her belly and her double chins to maintain her skinny figure. However, the mirror only shows her what she wants to see. Jeff sees her, and only then she returns to her senses. She faints after seeing what she has done to herself, so Jeff rushes to her while calling out to Nif. Nif enters the area seconds later with Nad and helps them to take Jeff's wife to the hospital. However, they see Tan's wife struggling. Nad asks her what's wrong, but she answers with a bloody cough before vomiting the caterpillars. However, that's not all. She keeps itching as more caterpillars crawl under her skin, so Tan's wife scratches herself until the caterpillars leave her body, causing her to faint. Nif carries her to the car. They leave to rush the two wives to the hospital, but they notice that they are going in circles, not leaving kilometer 81. At this time, Havoc stops playing with the girl after seeing a rat on a table. He takes a pellet gun before turning off the lights and pushing her away by calling her a slut. Jeff points out to Nif that it's happening again. With Ned asking, Nick shares what happened 25 years ago. It turns out, a fire breaks out in one of the rooms, killing three girls. And not long after that, they discover that Mira caused it, using black magic as a sacrifice. Nif and his friends run away in fear for their lives, but they always end up back at the orphanage. So they help Mr. Bandy capture Mira and bury her in the locked room after seeing her head cracked open from banging the door. On the other hand, Havoc fills the pellet gun with its bullets to kill the rat, which has suddenly disappeared. With the gun's flashlight, Havoc tries to look for the pest. However, he suddenly loses control of his right hand, as if someone is controlling him. He desperately tries to fight it back, but he fails miserably and staples his lips together. At this time, the boy puts a videotape to watch, but then the video changes and focuses on Mira walking limply toward the camera. He notices the background of the living room and repeatedly turns around as he sees Mira walking toward him until the video ends. However, he sees feet on the floor. As he looks up, Mira emerges from the television. The boy runs away in fear and unknowingly locks himself in the gaming area, where he finds Havoc removing the staples from his bloody lips. 
Havoc still has no control of his hands as he picks up the pellet gun and shoots the boy. Havoc tries to stop himself as the boy bleeds from the shots, but fails miserably. At this time, the adults return to the orphanage, where Nith informs the rest about the bus and the dead orphans. Ned panics as they cannot find her little son, so Nif and the others search the place. While waiting, something seems to pull Ned into Mr. Bandy's room. Meanwhile, Jeff notices that his wife is missing and looks for her. He sees her from afar, stuffing her face with a handful of caterpillars. Jeff stumbles in shock, and only then his wife returns to her senses before fainting again. Back to Nad, she looks under Mr. Bandy's bed, where she finds an antique box full of inappropriate photographs of orphanage girls, including the caretaker's wife. Still in tears, Nad shows the pictures to Nif and confronts him. She realizes that Mira was trying to save and protect the girls, but Mr. Bandy tried to hide it. The unraveling is interrupted as Jeff enters and pleads with Nif to take his wife to the hospital. However, they both know they can escape, so Nif shows him the photograph of the young caretaker's wife. Seconds later, the caretaker couple arrives after failing to find the boy. However, they are confronted by the three adults, including Nif, who shows them the pictures. The caretaker's wife denies such accusations, but confirms that Mr. Bandy molested every girl in the orphanage and was the mastermind behind the burnt room and the three girls' deaths as a warning if they say anything. Left with no choice, Mira resorted to black magic to protect the girls, but she was framed by Mr. Bandy. Suddenly, they hear someone screaming for help, and the girl in Nif's trunk enters the area. Although weakened, the girl reveals that they were on their way back to the orphanage when the bus suddenly lost control. A woman then entered the vehicle, and soon all the other kids seemed possessed and banged their heads on anything until it cracked open. The girl was left unaffected because she was wearing headphones, but she thought it was a death spell. She runs to the road after the woman leaves the bus, but then Nif accidentally hits her. After realizing that they had been used for murder, Nif chokes Mr. Bandy to kill him, but Nat arrives to stop him. He calms down a bit when he sees a picture of Mira in a hospital gown with a newborn baby. Myrnie's name is written on the back with her birthday. Nif realizes that Myrnie is not an orphan, but Mira's biological daughter from Mr. Bandy's molestation. They suddenly hear screaming, and as they reunite with the others, they see Havoc carrying a wounded boy. Nif rushes his son to go to the hospital when a possessed Tan's wife jumps on the hood and laughs at their misery. She returns to her senses, but loses control over herself and repeatedly bangs her head on the windshield until her head cracks open. Myrnie finally reveals herself, prompting everyone to run inside. Nad tries to fight with a knife, but Rain knocks her unconscious. Nad wakes up alone in a dark room, where she witnesses everyone suffer a hellish torture. Tom's wife grows holes in her back, with insects coming out. Jeff's hands bend backward, breaking his bones. The three of them are forced to sit on the floor, while a rain of acid melts their skins and bones. Nip's oldest son vomiting caterpillars, and the daughter receiving slashes on her back. Nan enters a room, where she finds her husband and Mr. Bandy. She also finds her little son, and tries to approach him when Myrnie slams her into the walls. Rain, who is implied as Myrnie's daughter from Mr. Bandy's molestation, stands aside as Myrnie blames them for what they have become. Although they did no harm, the ignorance of their family ordeals is also a sin, so they will suffer the same pain of watching their loved ones die. Rain removes the sickle from Mr. Bandy's chest and puts it in front of Nat so she can kill Nif to save her children. Myrnie controls them when the boy stabs her in the back, allowing Nad to attack her with the sickle. She pins Myrnie to the walls and beheads her, causing Rain to attack Nad after seeing her mother get killed. Nif removes Rain from Nad, but then, Myrnie reattaches her head. So Nad throws a lighted candle at her, setting Myrnie on fire. Nad escapes with her family and locks the room, leaving Mr. Bandy, Myrnie, and her daughter Rain burning to death. The film ends with Nad picking up her little son from school, when she sees a brief apparition of Myrnie staring at them. Nat ignores that and drives home. Meanwhile, in the now sold orphanage, sounds of Mira's clubbed foot echoes in its halls. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.